where you are. We promise not to give you a red card. Um, Terry, these the ballots for the more protection. Thank you. I am going to drop the material. Yes. Yeah. We get them too. I didn't take any out for us. Okay, uh, before I call the meeting to order, um, a couple brief announcements. Um, we have some folks in the room who were not here yesterday, so for those of you that were here yesterday, some of this is going to be a refresher, and that's fine, and you'll enjoy it. Uh, there, is, uh, there, is, there is Wi-Fi in the room. Uh, the uh, network is WISFIS or WISFIS 5G. The password is ASUS underscore WSFS, all lowercase. There is also a sign in the back with that information. Um, there is coffee and tea in the back. Um, so please um, take advantage of that. Get your caffeine so we're all pleasant and lovely people. Um, <laughs> I am uh, Jesse Lip. I'm the presiding officer. I use they, them pronouns, and my form of address is mixed chairperson. Uh, we are asking, um, as you can see on your badges, uh, where there's that lovely little spot for a pronoun sticker. Um, so we are uh, continuing uh, that thing that the convention has asked us to do. So when you um, speak uh, and you introduce yourself by name, we are also asking you to please state your pronouns. Um, please do so every time you come to the mic. I know some of you come to the mic frequently, but for people who are watching the video online and aren't in the room, um, it can sometimes be frustrating to have the I'm still so-and-so or not get the pronouns every time. So please try to do that um, every time you come speak. Uh, when I do recognize you, um, I will, when I recognize a speaker, I will also recognize which mic they are going to be using, whether that's the podium or the red roving mic that uh, Terry will bring to people who need it uh, so that our sound guy can make sure to turn the microphone on. When you come to the mic, please stand there for like 1.5 seconds before starting to speak to just make sure that the mic is on so that we don't do the, you, you start to talk and then it's not on and then you have to repeat yourself. I promise that the timekeeper will not take that 1.5 seconds out of your time. Um, I believe that is all of the announcements that I have, or not. Sorry? Right. Please uh, silence your cell phones or anything that's not a cell phone that makes noise. Uh, restrooms are out the door to the right, um, and they have super fancy sinks that are very hard to operate if you don't know how. Uh, there is a sensor to the left of the sink that you wave your hand over to turn it on and off. Uh, so now you all know how to use the bathroom. Yes, it is. There is a smoking area if you need it um, out the door, and then there's a balcony to the left. So if you need to use that during our breaks. Um, there was a comment made yesterday about the tables in the back not being part of the bar, that is not the case. So if you are sitting at the tables in the back, you, are, you still count and we will count you. So don't be concerned about that. Am I forgetting anything? Okay, so with that, I'm going to call uh, today's session of the WISPIS business meeting to order. <laughs> Thank you for that <laughs> scattered half-hearted applause. <laughs> Okay, so our first, um, actually before we get into the MPC elections, I wanted to ask, is there a representative of uh, Mid-American 2 or Helsinki who can answer a question about their financial report in the room? Okay, see no one, that still remains the answer to your question, Kent. I did get an answer from Helsinki. Okay, uh, for those that did not hear, Kent said that they did, uh, he did get an answer from Helsinki. Would you like to share it with the group? Um, can you please come to the mic? Yeah, let the secretary, um, and please make sure to restate the question that you asked, Kent. Give the secretary a second. 
Uh, my name is Kent Bloom. Uh, I had the question yesterday and uh, about uh, surplus funds. Uh, I talked to Yuka. I can't remember how to say his last name. Anyway, I talked to the chairman uh, of, of uh, work on 75 and he referred me to their treasurer. There are surplus funds and they will consider applications. Uh, but they haven't made any grants at the moment. And I have not found anyone who can represent mid American. Okay, thank you. Um, so we are going to move into... <coughs> Um, oh, sure, I could introduce you all again. Sorry. Um, I'm more tired than I was yesterday. Uh, so the business meeting staff, um, I already introduced myself. I'm the presiding officer, Jesse Lip. Um, up here on the table with me, we have Alex Axe, our timekeeper, uses they, them pronouns. Uh, Kevin Stanley, uh, my deputy presiding officer, uses he, him pronouns. Linda Denneroff, our secretary, uses uh, she, her pronouns. And Don Eastlake, our parliamentarian, uses uh, he, him pronouns. Our sergeant at arms, our uh, head sergeant is Terry Neal, uh, uses she, her pronouns. Uh, the person with the blue hair is uh, Joe Van, uh, another sergeant at arms uses she, hers. And uh, Ann Davenport is not here at the moment, but is another sergeant at arms and also uses she, hers. And uh, in the back, we have Lisa Hayes, our videographer, who uses she, hers. And sadly missing from Dublin is uh, my logistics liaison, uh, Jared Dashoff, uh, who helped uh, me do all of the things that aren't actually presiding over the meeting. If you have forgotten what Jared looks like, uh, Joni is helpfully holding up a photo in the back um, from, his, from his wedding. It's very adorable. Um, and... What's being distributed? The ballots for the ballot. No. 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 Uh, it's that, it's that two-page thing. Oh, okay. Oh, then more copies were printed? Okay, so what's being distributed is uh, some commentary on uh, item C3. Um, and we are also now going to distribute. Jovan. Jovan, don't forget to give us copies. We, we have it. Sorry, what's can somebody with a blue piece of paper confirm that the title of it is How Notability Still Matters? No, no it's not. Okay. Oh, no, it's, it's uh, Members of Dunlap. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It's, this is a different one. It's related to Dunlap. Yep, yep, yep. yep. We we'll got, we'll got it. Sorry, I didn't know this was coming. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe, can you get me an electronic copy of it? Joe, you're not, not yes. like this minute. Can you get Linda a like copy? I can't do that. Okay. Okay. Has everyone received a copy of the blue piece of paper? Great. Okay, we are going to move into the uh, elections for the Mark Protection Committee. Um, so I'm going to ask the Sergeant Arms to distribute the ballots. Start. And I am going to ask for a uh, able-bodied assistant who can do one um, so we have uh, four people on the ballot, Start up here, please. Sorry. especially because I need to name the four people that are on the ballot, and I might forget if I don't have it in front of me. Uh, so Tim Illingworth, Kevin Stanley, Tim Illingworth, Kevin Stanley, Joe Van Eckeren, and Ben Yallo are your nominees. Uh, we are using preferential voting, so you will number your choices with one being your first preference, two being your second preference, and so on. And then can I have a couple, Perky needs a pen it looks like. Um, Thank you. 
Okay, since it looks like there are people who are done, can I have uh, two volunteers to act as tellers to... Uh, Terry, are you <coughs> telling me to wait or are you volunteering? No, I'm telling you to wait. Okay. Um, is there anyone who doesn't Lisa, have a ballot? Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Oh, yes. All right, let's, let's get some. If you are done distributing your, or filling out your ballot, please just hold on to it. We want to wait until we have the ballots distributed to everyone before we start collecting them. If anyone at the end of the row end up with extra ballots, can you pass them back to the aisle, please? Yeah. Any extra ballots? Do we need to print more? I can print more. Any extra ballots? Yeah, I can print more ballots. <laughs> Does anyone? Does anyone else still need a ballot? Okay, I got all these. And please, we still have some extra ballots. Thank you. Is there anyone that has not received a ballot? Okay, hearing none. I'm going to ask for two volunteers to act as tellers. Oh, teller, no. Uh, uh, I see Perky and um, the woman with the long hair whose name I should know, but I have forgotten. Um, uh, yeah, so please pass your ballots into the aisle and they will be collected. Yeah, chair finally had a chance to fill theirs out. <laughs> is there is there anyone who still needs to hand in their ballot? Anyone else? Has everyone handed in their ballot? Okay. Okay, I'm just going to confirm Really quickly, if you still have your ballot, please wave it in the air. Okay, um, I will now uh, dismiss the tellers to go count the things. So the, uh, I'm going to announce that the poll is closed. And Okay, uh, I'm just going to confirm once again, there are no more ballots left in the room. Great. Okay. So the tellers are going to take care of that, um, and they will report back to us uh, once they have finished counting. Uh, and we are going to move on to the rest of our business. Uh, our first uh, item today is item C1, short title, Adding Series to the Series. It can be found on page four of your agenda. We have set a debate time of four minutes for this item. Uh, is one of the original makers of the motion in the room and would like to speak to it to start us off? Chauvin. Chauvin? Yes. You're one of the makers? Uh, you don't have to speak to it if you don't want to, but if you wish to. We're on C1. Okay, C1. You don't. 
I can speak on that. Don't worry. Nobody has it. Okay, just let me look at it. So I'm going to change it. Just have it. It's still going to be the same. Can I have my agenda back? Sorry. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to recognize Joe Van at the blue microphone as a member of the Nitpicking Fly Specking Committee and one of the original makers of the motion. This particular motion is just a tidying up. Uh, we forgot to add series to the definition that it uh, specifies all of the fiction categories. Um, so it should be no big deal. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Any additional speeches in favor? Seeing none, we are going to move to a vote. After my computer wakes back up, there we go. Uh, all those in favor of Item C1, short title, adding series to the series. Please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? And it looks like uh, unanimously the uh, item passes and is now part of our Constitution. Uh, and that will come in, that will become uh, a part of our Constitution at the end of our convention. That's. Uh, the way adding things to our constitution works for those in the room who are new. Um, okay, that wasn't four minutes, awesome. Moving right along, we are gonna go to item C2, short title, comics, books, and graphic stories. Uh, that is found on page four of your agenda. It was proposed by the Hugo Awards Study Committee, is one of the makers of the original motion in the room and wishing to speak to it. Uh, I'll recognize Kate Secor up at the podium microphone. Hello, my name is Kate Secor, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, one of the things that we talked about a lot was the comics fans were very upset about not including or comic in this title because they feel very, very firmly that graphic stories and comics are not the same thing. But I think we came to the agreement that they were both in the category of things that the original Hugo was intended to recognize. and. It's important to them to have that distinction, whether those of us who are not comics fans necessarily understand that or not. So we move to put it in. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Are there any speeches against? Uh, Renee, I'll recognize you up at the podium microphone. So I crunched the numbers, and of all the winners in this category, none have been graphic novels, and 54% uh, were comics. Of the finalists, 63% were finalists. 5.8% were graphic novels. And uh, the manga fans will strongly feel that graphic story and comic does not represent manga. And the bande dessinée fans will strongly feel that the graphic novel and comic does not represent bande dessinée. So uh, at some point we have to say this is what we named it. Uh, you know, it, that's it. Okay, thank you. That was a speech against. Um, I'm going to recognize uh, Joshua for a speech in favor at the podium microphone. And uh, very briefly, the chair would like to apologize for the fact that I don't know the names of everyone in the room. And for ease of identifying people, if I know your name, I'm going to use it. And if I don't, it's just because I, I don't know your name or I, I haven't remembered it. And it is in no way intending to show bias. I'm aware it can come across that way, for which I apologize. But I haven't figured out a better way to recognize speakers. Joshua Cronin calls, he him pronouns. Um, so as a comics fan, no, we, we know that comics and graphic stories are the same thing. However, graphic novel has been used by people who don't like comics for a very long time. 
and is the Western term for referring to this kind of story, adding or comic means that our comics thing mentions comics and is therefore not a slight to people to say, well, we don't really like comics. We're going to call them graphic stories instead. Thank you. Uh, is there another speech against? Uh, see none. Is there additional speech in favor? Uh, Perianne, with the podium microphone. Perry and Murray, or she, her. Uh, this actually makes no difference to WISFIS. Uh, the category definition is what matters, not the title. And if some people find the title of the category offensive and this will fix that, I think that's a good thing. Thank you. Uh, is there a speech against? How are we doing on time? Oh, no, over half a minute. Okay, uh, is there additional speech in favor? Uh, Chris Barkley up at the front. Microphone. Chris Harper, good morning. As one of the uh, originators of this category, there was a great deal of debate whether to add comics in the first place. I can only speak for myself, but it was always my intention to add comics to this title. Thank you. Uh, is there a speech against? I'm assuming we're out of time for in favor. If someone wants to make a really fast one, we've got a lot of seconds. Is there anyone who has? Okay, um, I will correct my I move to call the question. Um, the uh, question has been called. Is there anyone still wishing to speak? Um, seeing none, are there any objections to uh, the question being called and moving on to the vote? Okay, hearing none. Uh, those in favor of uh, adopting C2, short title, comic books and graphic stories, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those opposed? And the motion passes and is ratified. Um, I believe our tellers uh, are finished, but we're going to go ahead and handle C3 just to wrap up that section and then we will have our report from our tellers uh, before we move into the new constitutional amendments. Uh, our next item of business, therefore, is C3, short title, Notability Still Matters, found on page five. There was a uh, piece of um, commentary on this that was printed out and distributed. Um, if anybody does not have a copy of how Notability Still Matters would have affected the 2017 and 2018 video long lists, I believe there are additional copies in the back. Um, is there, uh, is one of the makers of the original motion in the room uh, and would wish to speak to it? Dave, Ben's looking at you. Okay, yep. I will recognize Dave McCarty up at the podium microphone. Oh, and there is uh, uh, six minutes for debate on this item. My name is Dave McCarty. Um, traditionally, uh, we have had a uh, a limitation on doing the long list so as not to report the long tail if something wasn't on enough ballots the Hugo administrator was not required to print it on the long on the long list they could if they desired but it wasn't required when we switched to EPH and detailing there we basically got rid of that and removed the ability for to give the administrator discretion to say this is the long tail and and you know not enough votes to really be significant um, and so this is only restoring a form of how we did it previously that I you know it's not required the administrator can still report more if he wishes but it's but it's giving him a line of you must report at least to this far thank you uh, I'll recognize Cliff Dunn up at the podium microphone I, I have a message Yes. I'm aware. <laughs> Make sure I'm Cliff Dunn. He, him pronouns. I move to amend as follows. Notwithstanding the 4% rule, any round which affects the elimination of a work which appears for or qualifies, uh, sorry, appears on or qualifies for the final ballot shall be included in the report. To clarify, are you proposing adding that to the end? Uh, yes, mixture. Okay. 
Okay, uh, can you please hand that to the secretary if you have it written out? I, I had it written out slightly differently. I, um, Why don't you come here? And yeah. Okay, we're going to pause for a second to make sure that all of our minute keeping is in order. I can't find the quotation. <coughs> Notwithstanding, four percent. Comma. Uh, there's a parliamentary inquiry. Uh, I'll recognize Perry Ann at the podium. What was that? Or actually, one moment. Sorry, because the the secretary is still typing, and she can't type two things at once. Does the chair rule? Perry Ann believes she her. Does the chair rule that this is a lesser change and therefore the amendment could still be adopted? Uh, one moment, I'm going to let the secretary yep. finish. Is there any, any ground which affects? Secretary has finished uh, including that in a minute, so we're going to come back to order. Uh, first, is there a second for the amendment? Second. Now that it's been seconded and it's not dead on arrival, yes. Uh, can the secretary please uh, read the amendment? The final, the final sen sentence will read, notwithstanding the 4% rule, any round that affects the elimination of a candidate that either appears on or qualifies for the final ballot shall be reported on. Thank you. Okay, right. uh, there was a parliamentary inquiry about whether or not this is a lesser change. Uh, for those of you who are new to the business meeting, uh, we, uh, when we have a constitutional, constitutional amendment, we pass it at one year and then it has to be ratified at the second year and any amendments that substantially change the constitutional amendment basically reset that ratification clock. If it is a lesser change, then it can still be ratified at this second business meeting. Um, and so that is the question that was asked, is if I am considering this to be a lesser change. Um, I am of a mixed mind on this, and so I am actually going to put it to the will of the body uh, to determine if this is a lesser change. Uh, Dave McCarty, do you have a like point of order or parliamentary inquiry or? I don't know what it is. Yeah. Okay. I, I have information that the room might not have. Make sure a motion to refer to committee. Okay. Uh, okay, a motion has been made to refer to committee to report back to us tomorrow by Keith Secor. Is there a second? I will second that. Uh, the motion has been seconded. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see which microphone he's moving to. Uh, the blue microphone. Martin Pine, P-Y-N-E, he, him pronouns, uh, parliamentary inquiry, what specifically are we referring to committee? Uh, we would be referring to the amendment to committee. Well, I mean, y yes, it also, the, the amendment being referred to committee takes the entire thing to committee. Um, but where we are in the stack is we are at the main motion and then the amendment and then referring to committee. Referring it to committee would take the entire thing to committee. We would not then be able to vote on it right after it had been referred. So, so that uh, the secretary is asking whether we are referring the amendment to the committee or the question of whether it's a lesser or greater change. Uh, because the question of whether or not it is a lesser or greater change was not a, a motion, I don't believe it can be referred to committee. Um, the intent was 
to move the amendment and the whole thing to committee. Yeah, so the intent was to move the amendment to the committee. Uh, ben, ben Yallo, uh, I'll recognize you at, which microphone are you moving to? At the podium. I believe that we need, sorry, uh, Benny Allo, uh, he, him. I believe that since the question of the parliamentary inquiry is on the stack, I don't believe we can commit until we get a ruling one way or the other. Uh, we could, once, once we resolve the parliamentary inquiry, then we can stick it back to committee, but I don't think we got the authority at this stage. Uh, thank you. Your point is well taken. I am going to take a brief standing pause because there are multiple things being set up at the head table and I want to make sure I hear everything from my consultants before I hear everything from all of you. So we're going to take a brief standing pause so that I can uh, consult with my parliamentarian. Dave is making a face at me. <laughs> Yes, Dave is welcome to come up to the front as well. Um, can you please turn off the head table mics for the moment? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 